Misuse of opioids, including painkillers and drugs like heroin, is something Americans have struggled with since before the 1900s. But opioid misuse has grown significantly in the last four decades, and tribal communities have been one of the hardest hit. What can we do as healthcare providers to prevent opioid addiction? And how can we effectively treat patients struggling with opioid use disorder? I knew if I didn't have the pills, I felt like I was gonna die. And I just couldn't live that way anymore. It was like living on the edge of a cliff. I got her and doctor gave me pills, and then next thing you know, I was like addicted to them. Every minute when I woke up had to be about getting loaded, getting heroin so I could function. It gets to a point where the body is so used to it in the brain that they can't live without it. And so what used to be um, a euphoric and a reward type thing is now, I just don't want to go through withdrawals. In America, many people die of opioid overdoses each year. Let's say that this dot represents 1,000 people. In 1999, a little over 8,000 people in the United States died from opioids. Since 1999, though, this number has grown year by year, so much that in 2017, an astounding 47,600 people died from opioids in America. In 1995, they had passed the um, Pain Act that we were to treat pain to the nth degree. That was your fifth vital sign. And that was the big impetus, you must treat, you must treat. So as we see over the last 20 years, we've created or helped assist create substance use disorder. American Indian and Alaska Native people have disproportionately felt the effects of opioids. Since 1999, deaths due to drugs among Native people has quadrupled. And in 2017, Native people had the second highest opioid death rate of any group in America. Addiction has caused a great deal of suffering for American Indian and Alaska Native people. Fortunately though, we can offer effective treatments that can help those who are addicted to opioids. For instance, recommending that patients speak with a counselor on a regular basis can help them change their behaviors related to their opioid use. Also, encouraging our patients to participate in traditional healing practices and cultural traditions may support their health and wellness. Finally, Prescribing certain medications like methadone and buprenorphine may make the recovery process easier by decreasing patients' cravings and withdrawal symptoms. Combining behavioral health counseling with medication to treat opioid addiction is called medication-assisted treatment, or MAT. Research has demonstrated that MAT is the most effective way to recover from opioid addiction. Medications such as Suboxone can be critical for a lot of individuals suffering from opiate use disorder. And a big reason why is the research has been very clear. Uh, most patients with a history of opiate use disorder who engage in an abstinence-based program will drop out within the first 72 hours. I've watched people do so great in recovery on medicated assisted treatment where they couldn't when they were trying abstinence-based treatment. I thought I was gonna die. I mean, for 45 days, withdrawals, every just laying in bed, tossing and turning, and I tried so hard to do it on my own. After I took the medicine, I, I calmed down, and I was just like kind of in shock, because I was like, oh my God, I just felt normal. And it's been like, I had not felt normal in years. I had known about the MAT program in SLEDS and I had always had this idea in my head if I could just get 10 days of clean time I could get on the shot called Vivitrol. So I got out of jail and I did exactly that. I went to the SLEDS clinic and sure enough they had the shot. I had talked to them before in the past about getting the shot and they happened to have one and they gave me the shot that day and I've been clean and sober ever since. Fortunately Physicians are able to prescribe and dispense approved narcotic medications like buprenorphine in settings other than opioid treatment programs. 
In order to do this, though, physicians must qualify for a data waiver from the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. I would tell another provider to get their data waiver because it makes such a difference in their patients' lives. What we're finding is if we can treat their withdrawal symptoms, allow their brain to heal, get them the services they need with behavioral health, addiction counseling, decreasing the barriers to their success, they're gonna have success long-term. We acknowledge a patient's trauma by having them engage in individual counseling sessions. Uh, we refer them to mental health counseling sessions. We have closed trauma-informed care groups. We also work with the staff, all staff, not just our clinical staff in uh, doing trauma-informed care trainings. We see people all the time who are struggling, who are homeless, injecting heroin, unemployed, problems within their family environment, within a short period of time of engaging in our program, we're seeing them achieve stable housing. We're seeing them engage in meaningful employment. We're seeing dynamics where families are being restored. If we can help these individuals lead a healthy life, that's what we need to do. We can heal our communities through education, action, and embracing culture. To learn more, visit the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board's website at npaihb.org slash opioid for free information, fact sheets, videos, and posters you can use in your clinic. Finally, if you would like additional support learning to manage patients with complex conditions such as opioid use disorder, join the over 200 providers across 150 clinics that have participated in telehealth echo clinics. Learn more and sign up by visiting indiancountryecho.org.